fellow crafters. This is noon on Saturday and um, I'm going to try this Facebook Live. Um, today I'm going to be working on water coloring. It seems to me I've had a lot of private messages from folks wanting to know how I watercolor. And I'm going to be really honest, I don't have a format to my watercoloring. I Sometimes I just start with some colors on the paper. I don't exactly know what I'm going to do. Um, I will share with you that Stamp, uh, Stampin' Up! does have a lot of stamp sets that do some watercoloring looks for you and so like you can see right here on their cover of their catalog this year they demonstrate that with different stamping sets and this one is actually um, from the Oso Eclectic stamp set and it gives you kind of a like a watercolor um, feel to it and then you know you can stamp the color down and then you can stamp an additional color on top and give that look and as you can see here they used this stamp well, I'm hoping my light is better maybe if I do that they used this stamp and um, they stamped it three different colors and then stamped the other stamp on top of it just to give it a watercolor backgroundy wash um, so many things are done with mixed media that it's it very popular. <clears throat> so that's kind of one stamp set that they have, but I want to show you, and I do not have every one that they have, but I want to show you the different types of stamp sets. They've got like a two-step stamping one that's our hostess set that, you know, you do a background color and you can see that it's, the color is just, um, well, like a watercolor effect. And then you can put another one on top and it makes like a tulip. This has been a very, very popular set. Um, I actually did a video using this set. So if you scroll back in my blog, you'll see that. Um, here's an, a, one of the newer ones that I got. I think I posted this yesterday on my blog, but this is Paint Play. I love it. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's happy, it's fun. You look at it and you just, I don't know, to me it spoke to me and I've used it for all kinds of things like backgrounds with little swirlies and um, uh, just little stampin' stuff um, for backgrounds and then I've made flowers out of them and I think that was on my, my post yesterday. Here's kind of a background one that gives you the effect of, you know, um, mm -hmm. like, the, like uh, um, backgrounds have been, um, oh my gosh, I can't think of the word using a paintbrush. See, I did my own, but we have one that's very similar. But here's how I use that and did my own. Um, you know, just taking the watercolor brush and going down. And I, I'll show you how to do that stuff today. But they do have one for those of you who just start out and want to try um, a, an effect for a background. They also have one that is called watercolor wash, which it just makes it look like you did a watercolor wash in the background. And like I have a couple of cards. Let me see. Here's one that I did, and I, you know, I just did the own watercoloring myself. But I could have went over it with some ink, and um, you know, place that on if if you feel unconfident about it. So. There's that. There's also, I've had this one. They've had this one for a while, and I love it. There's a, quite a few things that you can um, find on Pinterest that has been done with this set. So that just gives you options if watercoloring seems intimidating to you. I'm going to go ahead and put this aside. That's how I started. Um, but then I kind of started getting my own thing, and I think you've seen some of my posts. Um, this is one that I did where I literally just, I use the watercolor paper, which it's a little bit um, sturdier and it can handle the water without warping. And I put, I pooled the color. And then um, this is from one of our current um, framelits or thinlets dyes. And it, uh, I just glued it on top and then I just watercolored kind of inside the flowers and added a sentiment. <laughs> That's it. I mean, easy peasy Japanese. -y. So 
when I'm being asked about my watercoloring, this one I got a lot of attention about, um, and like if I can reproduce it, I'll be honest, I can give it a shot, but it comes out different every time. Watercoloring itself just comes out different. There's like not an exact science on watercoloring, and I don't know how I do what I do. I can, sh you know, I'm very glad to sit down with someone in person and show them, but I'll, I'll try to do a little bit today. So this one, I just had fruit in mind. So I put, actually, I wanted it to come out as strawberries, and it, they're a little too big, I think, compared to my peaches, but I still think it's absolutely beautiful. And so I went back again, still having that idea in my head, and I made this one. And this to me looks more like a strawberry. And, um, you know, then you just add your, your sentiments and your sayings and um, whatever you want to decorate it up, embellishments. This is a, I thought it looked like a strawberry blossom. It's from another one of our framelits. So, um, I know that it seems more seems like it's really complicated and a lot of you have been telling me I can't do what you do but I couldn't do what I did either until I got in and played with it and tried um, here was another one that I posted early on and it's just a wash how did you make the clouds was some of the questions it's I'll show you today um, that one stamp set this was a a swap that I did um, for a group of gals and that I was talking about that had the watercolor in the back or Stampin' Up! kind of does it for you. I just cut this these out and I used the watercolor wash for the same flower and I just put it in the background to give it that watercolor wash. It Watercoloring is really just um, a medium. You're going to make mistakes. I don't know how many that I, I looked at it afterwards and I went, ooh, and I threw it away. But it was just paper, just a little bit of water and ink. So um, here's one. Actually, I'm going to a wedding reception today. It's just a watercolor wash. So let's just start with some of these that I um, kind of showed you and, I'm, and um, give you an idea. So I didn't know what I was going to do. I don't have a plan in mind. I'm kind of like winging this and... To be quite honest, I'm kind of nervous because this is going to be one of those ones where you go to wing it and you flub it right on live, you know. But um, this is what's called a watercolor, an aqua painter, and it's by Stampin' Up. It just has a little um, bristle on it. You fill the, the, the water reservoir here, and then you just kind of squeeze it down like so, and water will come down into this part. Okay, let's see here. Um, my goodness. And if you, if anybody's asking questions, I'm sorry, my camera is wiggling. It's actually my phone. I don't have an expensive camera. So um, <clears throat> I'll just go back through the news feed <clears throat> when I'm done to try to answer any questions. And I'm sorry about my voice here cracking up. <clears throat> but you squeeze it down and then you can see on my finger the water comes out so it's kind of a controlled thing where you can keep going and you just wipe it off and a lot of times um, you can have a rag beside you today just for today I'm just gonna use a you know I like to clean out the color any color that might be in it from the last time I used it um, and then you can kind of put more water into it so very simple so to do a um, quick background and since I don't know what I'll ever use this for I'm just gonna pick my favorite color that we have I I love all of Stampin' Up! colors I love their stamp pads I love the qualities especially the new ones with the sponging but I really 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 love Bermuda Bay so I'm gonna go ahead and do a Bermuda Bay wash um, actually maybe I should do something just a little lighter which I'll go for pool party then no, you know what I'm going to do? See, I told you, there's no rhyme or reason to what I do. I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do the, I've been kind of getting into fall. So, um, what I do for just the wash is I take the um, stamp pad and I squeeze it. See how I'm squeezing it? So you saw that there was nothing on there and now there's ink on the tray. And that's what I use for my tray my palette I guess you would say and then I do the same thing with this one and you can see it's had some love okay
So this is uh, berry burst and elegant eggplant. And I have no idea what I'm going to do, but I'm just going to show you a quick wash. So I, if I take in, and I, I usually start with the, um, with the lightest color, but these are two really robust colors because I want to make sure that it shows up on the camera here. So I'm going to just start with Berry Burst, and I want to show you, I've got quite a bit of ink on that, and it is um, quite an extreme color. So very robust color. I'm going to move that so I don't. But if I'm going to do a background, I, you know, I cut my piece of paper and sometimes I cut my paper bigger. This is four by five and a quarter because I don't know if I'm going to use the whole thing or if I'm going to use part of it. And so then what I do is I just do a wash like so. Come here on the paper and I do a wash. That's it. I mean, there's no big secret. Now you can fill it in, you can let it dry, and then you can come back with a deeper, darker color. And since I'm going from a lighter color to a deeper color, I'm not going to clean it off. But if I wasn't, I would be cleaning my brush off. You know, add a little bit of water. I like a, a, a nice bit of water. And if you don't want it this bold, um, put plain water on the paper first and then go into it. But so mix in my color. You can see there's a lot of water here. Mix in my color and I just want to do a quick swipe and I think what I might do is I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to just blend it right back into that. And since this is darker, I'm going to go back into here like so. And it's pretty wet right at the moment, but I want to kind of go back in like that. So there I have. I've just got kind of a simple wash and it makes for backgrounds. Now, that would be kind of like what I did here. I had no rhyme or reason for it. This is an actual um, cutout and that I ended up um, pasting over top my background. So that gives you kind of an idea. Same with this. This is the same thing. I did a, um, a light one and I just put that on top of uh, uh, a cutout on top of it also. So I'm going to set that aside to dry because now I've got a project I have to do <laughs> using that. Um, another technique that I have done is this is um, a stamped image on watercolor paper. So as you can see, I goofed up. I didn't like it on this side, so I redid it. I flipped it over. So just to give you an idea, I'm going to grab some stamps here. And um, for this one, I'll just use this because it's going to be easier for me to remember what I'm doing. But I just use this uh, little... Um, flower that is like a solid image on from my lots of love stamp set and I love these that are the rubber with um, where you can place them on the block because they just store so nice so what I did here is I took a, a sheet and let's see there's two sides of the paper I prefer the smoother side if I'm stamping on it so just a little tip but I'm this one I use Tangerine Tango, and I think I'm going to change that up this time. I'm going to use Bermuda Bay because it, quite honestly, is my favorite, and I'm kind of dying to get into it. So, I ink up my image, and I like to make sure it's pretty inky, like so. And then... Let's see, I'm going to use a scrap piece of paper here from another project I was working on. But I'm going to just stamp it on here a few times. And I think I'm going to turn the image this time and stamp off the page there and stamp off the page there. Okay, so you get the idea. So the image has been stamped on. And then I'm going to go for some old olive with this for the leaves like I did on that. And I'll come back in and 
I really like this grouping of leaves because just so I don't have to, but I use that one too sometimes. Um, just so I don't have to make two at a time. I think it stamps up more place and more uh, space and I'm kind of a, I like stamping to be easy and fun. And like I said, I, I don't plan this. Okay, I got goober all over the edge of that, so I'm going to have to be careful, but we'll just put one there. And I think I used pear pizzazz on that one. I think I'm going to do it here. Okay, quickly here, Pamela. Okay, so I just kind of filled it in. So it is not looking like it is anything more than stamped, maybe just a little bit kind of grainy. That's fine. What I did is we have these things called, um, I think they're called spritzers and stamp and spritz or something like that and it's just a little spray bottle that I have filled in with some just plain water and I come here and I okay maybe that was a little close so you can see I make mistakes too but that's okay because if I don't like it I can cut that off and still use the rest of this if I can get this right but it's hard doing this with a camera in your face but that's this is literally all I do and just kind of let it you can well, I don't know if you can see here in the camera I'll try to bring this up closer you can see it starts to spread and if you want to if you want it really runny looking you know you can actually move it around I actually want a little bit more on that piece now I'm going to set this aside to dry because then I'm going to show you how I did that middle because um, I didn't use a stamp or anything. So that gives you another idea of how you can give kind of a watercolor image. Um, let's see here. This one, all I literally did is I just picked the colors I wanted. I took the aqua painter and I ran the colors down, I cleaned it out, I ran the next color down, I cleaned it out. Very simple. So, um, let's see if there's a combination of colors I like here. Maybe I can just do something quick just to show you. So, this is Flirty Flamingo. And Emerald Envy, which I, it's kind of a crazy green and I think some people are intimidated by it but I when I need that color green I love it because it goes with purples and blues and then this is peekaboo peach so oh, let's just see what this looks like so I'm gonna go in with peekaboo peach and okay if I want these colors to be really thick I really get a lot of ink and see I don't have as much water I gotta squeeze some water down here I get a lot of ink but I don't get it too watery because I want more color and you know it's just literally running that's it that's all I did this is a little bit um, more washed out so let's go to a color that has a little more color in it That's what I did. And then I stamped, um, you know, a great big image on top of it. And I would just, oh, I'm over here. You can't really see. I just come over here, clean out my brush, go into my next color. These would be great, um, especially if you're doing memory keeping and stuff, um, scrapbookers, and want a unique background or um, other things that come to mind why I like to do watercoloring is one, I pick my own. Um, design off of it and I think it kind of gives it um, mm, oh, what kind of a look like kind of like a freeform look you know so again just go up now if I wanted to get a more intense color 
um, let me see if I can find, okay, here's Peekaboo Peach, and what I would do is I would take, this is our, our, um, Stampin' Ink refills to, like, refill our pad, and I, they're like a couple bucks each or something, but they come in handy as your pad starts to dry out instead of buying a whole new pad. But here's another thing that you can use them for, is I put literally one drop down. That one's for my Peekaboo Peach. And I want you to see the difference. You can see these are kind of lighter colors. So if I come in here and I get that in really wet with just color, This and that are the same color. It's just the amount of ink that you use. Um, I think our, I think what I really like about this is I used to love to paint, especially in high school. And um, I'm sorry, I'm off camera here. I'm cleaning my brush. I'm just squeezing some water out and getting that color out of it. But um, in high school, but paints, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love painting and I always will, but paints are really expensive where as I can buy a re-anchor in this and this can um, go for such a long time, especially with these re-anchors that I, I don't know, this ended up being the medium that I really like. So um, to do that again, let me see if I've got a... I have a lot of re-anchors, so excuse me. Let me do another. Here's Flirty Flamingo. So if I take the same thing and do a dot here, just like on I did on this one, we'll see the difference in this color. So I got a lot of that um, wiped out. There is a little bit of water left in my, um, whatever you call this, what do you call that? My pen, but I got it, most of it out. And so see how I'm just sucking it up into the tip and I don't know if the camera shows that very well or not. But okay, so here was the original Flirty Flamingo and here it is with more intense. I'm going to go So, depending on the look that you're going for is just the amount of strength of ink. One drop, I still have plenty, I can do more lines. So that gives the idea of how I did, um, you know, this design for this card. And like I said, I think these would be cute if you are one of those um, scrapbookers who um, do the pocketed memory keeping. I think you could make your own look, especially if it was like school colors or whatever you're scrapping about, you know. So that's one idea. That's another idea. Let's see how this is going, if this this one's drying. Now this one's drying pretty good. That's the other thing about this watercolor paper is it sucks it up. It kind of mm, like bends at first, but it, it absorbs it and then it kind of goes flat. So let me clean out my brush here and pick up some of this and then I'm going to show you how so you'd think I, I went in on this example that I showed you and I did um, like either a stamp, you know but I didn't. I'm, I'm kind of a lazy artist. And so I took one of our Stampin' Write markers and it has, it has a writing end and it has kind of like this brush tip end, which is just like that aqua painter brush. And I literally went into the centers and I went, and because I'm alive, my hands are shaking <laughs> a bit, but you get the idea. That's all I did. And so then this could be hooked onto a card and it's like making, in fact, I'm going to show you because I have right here, 
This is probably some of my favorite designer series paper. It's like making your own designer series paper, only you're giving that that handmade watercolor look. And the areas that I don't like, I can cut off and maybe use it, this isn't the right color, but kind of like on the side like this, or if it needs to come off a little bit here and fill it in a little bit more. And then you've got your own um, customized piece. So that's another way to watercolor. So I've showed you backgrounds. Um, okay, here's another thing. I've been asked a lot about the sky backgrounds. Well, I don't really, again, I, I don't know my method to this. What I can say is that I just do kind of, um, I look at it and I just kind of eyeball it. So this one, I'm going to get a lot of water in my brush. So I'm going to have that, I don't know if you can see that filling up down there, but it's filling up pretty good. And before I even put any color ink onto my paper, I'm just going to wash my paper with a little bit of water. And it kind of starts to curl. You don't want to do too much. Oops, there must have been, I must have picked up some ink somewhere. But again, I go back in. So this is pool party. And I go back in and I get my color that I want. And I wash it lightly over my cardstock. Okay, then the secret that I do is I let that dry, that's this background, then I come back in just with the same formula that I just told you, and let me see if I can find, I didn't know, here we go, same formula that I told you, I use one drop. And I usually let it dry first because right now, see how it's kind of curled up? Um, but I guess just for video and me being nervous here. Um, but then when it's dry, because if I don't let it dry, it's going to bleed more than this one did. But, you know, I kind of just... Um, I'm going to have to let it dry, so we'll come back. Maybe I could do it with a darker color. Let me try something real quick first. Maybe I can do it with, this is way darker, so because it's way darker, I'm going to dilute it. Let's see if I can give you the idea. So say I wanted a cloud right here. I would, I don't even, there we go. And of course, it's, it's dried up more, and I want one here. That's what I do, and then when it dries, it goes like that. So, okay, and let's see if we've got enough time. I never let the water pool like that. I, I usually wipe it out of my... Um, because I don't want the water getting onto my stamp pad. So let's see if I can do one more. I've had a couple. So my strawberries and my fruit. Um, well, I use the aqua painter. So let me get this cleaned out here. And do I have here? I've got this is this side. I thought I had another little piece, but maybe I don't. I'll just use this little bit here. So um, I'm going to grab the I got Flirty Flamingo and Peekaboo Peach right here. So for like the peach, I already have that ready to go. I'm going to make these kind of small and I'll try to pull them up on the video here, but so I get some color, and I always start with the lighter color. And for this, you see, I just kind of did like a circle. And 
obviously that's too much water. Of course, you guys, because when you go live, it doesn't go as easy, but you see how I left like an area? It's not all colored in. Come back in maybe with a little bit darker color and it's it's still not all colored in. It's that easy. So I do that and then I take another color that just kind of matches it and complements it. And I do like, I don't know, just what I think looks good. I just kind of swoosh it until it looks like what I want it to look like. And it, you know, it, it dries a little bit different color. So you can see it start, that's all I did. So this is not, this is not rocket science. That's all I did. I just, and then of course added a, a leaf to it my own way. So easy peasy and one more. Um, let me grab the berry burst again. Now for this one, as you can see, I did the peach here to show you that. Well, on here I was trying to do strawberries my first attempt, and I didn't think they looked very strawberry, so I went back, and this actually was a scrap piece of paper that I started with, and then I thought, eh, I kind of like it, and I'm going to see what it comes out, and so here I made a cute little card. But all I did, I got some ink on here, and at first I had more water in it, and I kind of made like a, like a heart shape. And I didn't color it all in, but you see there's quite a bit of water on there. Okay, now, because there's water, you have to let that soak in before you go back in. So let's just use this one as an example. So I had this blurry background. Then I came back in once it was dry and I just did a little more color around it. And when I was done, I decided I liked them all. I didn't want to, you know, they're all so different. It's kind of like a heart shape maybe is kind of how I did the strawberries. This one's darker, this one's lighter. You know, to me, when you're, I love it when I give someone a handmade card and they tell me that they think it's wonderful and I brighten their day and, um, I actually just sent my mother-in-law one, um, and yesterday she um, messaged me and she said, you know, you made my day. And we're in a, a society where email is really quick, texting someone is really quick, but having a handmade card from someone really means something. So um, I think maybe some of that is this is my creative outlet but I also like sharing it with everyone. So I'm hoping that you're getting an idea of these tips that I'm sharing with you today. So this is not quite dry, but for the sake of video, I'm gonna do something I've never done before. We'll see if it works. Eh. It took some of the color away, but it works. So you see my little strawberry there. So I'm gonna take out more of the water out of my brush it's still wet to the touch, and I don't know if you can see, there's still some water on it, but then I'll go in here, not where the, it had pooled, but where there's more color, and I like to pull it out a little bit and see what I've got. Sometimes I test it on my scrap paper and see, I like that. that would That's going to work for me. So then I can just come in here, and I can be an artist. I've never tried doing little spots. Maybe that's what I could do, but I usually just pick a side and come on in and kind of scribble it down and maybe in the middle there maybe add a little bit more water and see if I can get that to kind of blend in so there you have it that's my my attempt at peaches and at strawberries and with strawberries um, let's see, I suppose I'm not going to have the color green I want, but that's okay. We'll go back to the old olive. And so for the peaches, 
their leaves were, I just picked a spot maybe where there was an indention in my water coloring. And let's see, I need just a little bit more water, just a drop more here. And I just kind of made a, that's it. That was it for my leaves. For the strawberries, I got even more water and I was trying to think of them as more viney. So, you know, I had kind of a, like a stemmy, you know, there's no right or wrong to this. Um, nature is not perfect. So I figure that if I'm given something that's made from my heart and it's not perfect, I don't know. I That's what I have to show you today, kind of out of all my techniques, the backgrounds, the, the clouds, striping, you know, um, I don't know. I will go back through and see if there's any questions. I can't even tell if anyone's on. I haven't seen anything go through. And and then um, the uh, also the stamping and then spritzing for um, your watercolor look. So if you're uh, nervous about it, these were kind of some of the things that we made today. So I hope you um, I hope you learned something from this, and I hope that you enjoyed it. I was very nervous, but I've had enough people message me saying um, that they're following me now on Piccadilly Stampin' and um, that they're wanting to know how I did some of those from my earlier posts, and so I thought I would just take a moment to do that with you. So I'm thankful for everyone who took tuned in today and if you have any questions um, piccadillystampin.com you can find me there from there you can find a link to my store if you're interested in purchasing any of the items if you want to host class if you want to learn how to earn items for free if you're a hobbyist and you think that maybe this is something that um, you would like to do to get your products for free definitely I would love to tell you how to do that um, and, um, if you want to just host a class and have me come and show some stuff and demonstrate some stuff, I would love to do that too. So, um, you can reach me at Piccadilly Stampin with no G, Stampin, um, at gmail.com to message me. Uh, you can see these things and more. Um, I'll try to get this video up on my blog here. Um, today or tomorrow and on Pinterest and YouTube but Piccadilly Stamping is where you find me please like please share if you know anyone who's interested um, it's this is very new for me I never thought I'd be doing this but I am trying to make a business out of it and I would love to share it with those who really want to learn it so I hope you have a fabulous weekend keep crafting keep creating thank you so much for joining me